specific lessons are developed on mental math strategies. And I talk a lot about mental math. Here's an example of mental math. Fifth grade, they really start to get into some decimal. Fourth grade tends to be mostly fractions. And our goal and hope is that when they leave fourth grade, they are fraction experts, and we don't have to teach that anymore. When they get to fifth grade, we really start to break it into the decimals and try to get that really concept down in Singapore classrooms. So we teach kids. Um, 34.73 plus 14.98 equals what? Well, we don't want them to write it down on their paper and borrow and carry. We want them to do it in their head. So we tell them, you know, this 14.98 is real close to 15, right? We know that. So we're just going to add this and this, and that's pretty easy to do in my head. 3 is 4 and 9. So that's 49.73. But remember, we had 2 less than that. So we just got to take 0.02 away from that, 2 hundredths less than that. So now I have 49.71, and kids are good at it. They get that, they understand. Make groups of 10, they figure things out pretty quick. So it's a mental math strategy that they do. Uh, bar modeling is used to solve word problems. Again, bar modeling is just, it's a pictorial, a picture drawing of the problem. So real simple here, this is a whole, this is 12 units here, and I've got four units equals 12, so I divide it into four equal units, and then I can just think in my head, well, how much is, one unit going to be. And so we can do some simple division, and our kids can do that. We know it's three, so if I need to know how much is three units, well, three plus three plus three, or three times three, I get to nine. So they can see it visually, and it comes fairly quickly for them. Time for you to try. So if you're interested, this is the time. I'm going to give you a problem. Lily has four fifths of a meter of cloth. She used three quarters of her cloth to make handkerchiefs. How much cloth does Lily have left? Okay. So think about it in your head. You don't have to write this out if you don't want to. If you want to try to jot it down, see if you can figure it out. Ray, uh, if you have an idea about how you'd start to begin to solve this problem, um, thinking the way we learned math and you're willing to share, you're more than welcome to uh, share out a comment. Here's how we teach it in a Singapore classroom, just so you can get an idea. Okay. We say, the first thing you do in any word problem, any problem solving type of a problem, is you need to figure out what the important information is. So we teach kids. Uh, Lily started with four fifths of a meter of cloth. She used three quarters of that cloth. How much cloth does Lily have left? That's the question. That's what they want me to figure out. So we're going to draw a picture. We're going to say, okay, we've got some cloth here. Obviously it doesn't matter the width. It's just talking about, or the length. One of the dimensions doesn't matter because it just says four fifths of a meter. So I'm going to go ahead and draw a whole meter of cloth here. I should have used a different color than yellow. But this is a whole meter of cloth here, just because I know that four-fifths of a meter. So I'm going to split that into fifths, because I know she's going to use start with four-fifths. So we're going to teach our kids, let's go ahead and color in that four-fifths. So we know how much cloth she has right now. She has four-fifths of a meter of cloth she started with. Ta-da, there it is, that important information. Now we know that she used three-quarters of her cloth. So how are we going to show that she used three-quarters of her cloth? Well, we're just going to take three-quarters of it away. Okay, so we're just going to show that right there is three quarters of her cloth that she used. Well, now my big question is, how much does she have left? Can anybody see real quickly how much is left? The yellow is the portion that's left. If I know that that whole thing is a meter, well, then fairly quickly I can figure out, and kids can figure out, that that's going to be one-fifth of a meter of cloth left. So didn't have to invert and multiply, didn't have to multiply, didn't have to find common denominators, didn't have to do any of that, right? Because if I multiply these in 12 ninths, 9 twelfths, yeah, what do I do? I can't remember, you know, and, or 12 twentieths, I guess it would be, and then I have to reduce that fraction and everything else. Pretty simple here. Kids draw it out, they see it quick, and, and they solve them fast. It's kind of exciting. Um, I don't expect you to try this one because it's a very long one. I put this problem in here because I want to show you where we are headed with state assessment. We have something that is common core math standards, have, or common core standards have been adopted by the United States, and they're a set of standards that 48 of the 50 states are going to use, which is kind of exciting. We can finally start comparing some apples to apples and oranges to oranges, in my opinion. There's going to be one assessment. It's called a smarter balance assessment, and you'll hear this term come up. And um, this is a sample problem that your students will have to do on a smarter balanced assessment for mathematics. This is a quarter of the test. This is the performance task portion of it. So just to give you an example, you work for a company that makes robots and your boss has asked you to design a new one. It's going to have a head, a body, two arms, and two legs. 
The first step is to draw what your robot's going to look like. You're going to get some grid paper and you're going to go ahead and draw this. The front of the body must be a rectangle, so students need to know what a rectangle is. With an area, they need to know what area is. That is greater than, they need to understand greater than in comparing numbers. 64 square centimeters, they're going to have to know something about centimeters. But less than 140 square centimeters. The front of the head must be a rectangle with a perimeter of 18. So now they need to know exactly what perimeter is and exactly how much that perimeter is going to be. The front leg must be a quadrilateral. Now they need some more terminology. What's a quadrilateral? Is a square quadrilateral, Mr. Button? Absolutely. Four sides, right? That's all that matters. Okay? Four sides. Is a trapezoid a quadrilateral? Absolutely. Okay? But it says the front of each leg has to be a quadrilateral that is not a rectangle. So could a square be the answer? Is a square a rectangle? It is. It is. Definition of a rectangle is opposite sides run parallel in four 90 degree angles. So a square is a rectangle. So if I use the square, I get this, cro I get this problem incorrect. Okay. Uh, the front of each arm must be a rectangle divided into equal parts with three quarters of the parts shaded. So now they need to know their fractions. They need to be able to draw a rectangle and divide it equally. Each eye must be shaped like a hexagon. Another terminology, another ge geometric shape. Equal parts with one third of those parts shaded. Again, fractions. The drawing must contain labels with any numbers and words that help your boss understand uh, when your drawing's complete, you've completed this first part of this problem. And remember, this is only a fourth of their test. Now the second part, your boss wants you to continue with your drawing your robot. He's given you the guidelines for creating the back of the robot. Well, guess what? You can't have a different shape back than you have a shape front, right? Because it's 3D, you can't, you know. So we're going to go ahead and draw the same shapes, same size. But on the back, we need to be able to have an opening to fit two AAA batteries. So I'm going to hand the kids two AAA batteries. They're going to have to measure them and make sure their opening can fit these two AAA batteries. So there's some measurement. Um, the perimeter of the opening must be less than 16 centimeters. Okay? So they're going to have to use a ruler to measure. Um, the back of the body must contain an on-off switch like a rhombus. How many people know what a rhombus is? You don't have to say it out loud. Yeah, rhombus. Fun. The rhombus must have a perimeter of eight. So again, you've got to have exact perimeter. Uh, a code is needed to unlock your robot. Make this code by creating a skip counting number pattern that starts with the number seven. So kids have to start with seven. The very smart, very bright kids will say seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12. <laughs> That's a skip pattern, right? It's going up by one. The creative kids will go up by 42. You know, they'll, they'll figure out something. They'll, they'll do a creative skip um, counting. And then when they're done with that, you're gonna turn it into your boss and uh, make sure you've met all those guidelines. Well, here's the next part. Your boss has asked you to add some features to your robot. You're going to program your robot. You're going to program him to do measurement conversions. So when you press a button, it speaks. So you're going to add three square buttons to the front of each. When each button's pushed, it'll control a different conversion. Pushing the first button will cause the robot to say one of two sentences that converts from kilometers to meters. So the first one, you push the button, it says two kilometers equals, mm. now your kids have to know conversions in metric system. The next time, eight kilometers equals, mm. well, pushing the second uh, button will cause your robot to say two sentences about converting from hours to minutes. So now you have to know hours to minutes conversions, and you get to decide what those are. Pushing the third button, you're going to convert from pounds to ounces. So again, kids have to have conversion skills. Then the last part of your quarter of your test, you're um, going to program this robot to move, and it's got to move Every one second has to move one inch, I believe it is. Yep, every one second, one inch. So now they need to know about rate. They need to understand that piece. Um, so they want you to tell us if this is correct or not. In 12 seconds, will your robot move a foot? If you put the answer yes, you're not going to get the correct answer. You're going to say yes because 12 inches equals one foot. And one second is one inch. It's 24 seconds, one yard. Hopefully they will say no, because we know that there are 36 inches in a yard, not 24, or 24 is only two feet, or whatnot. 26 inches, two feet, six inches. Hopefully they'll figure out the answer. Then the one I know they'll all get, choose a name for your robot and write the name at the bottom. Okay, so I know they'll get that one, and there'll be some creative names.